Hello, hello everybody. My name is Jiří Slaví and... Uh, Remind you, tell people, sign up for a lightning talk. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, there is an announcement uh, from Jim that you should sign up for lightning talks out there. There is a paper, so you can just uh, sign up there. Uh, my name is Jiří Slaví and I would like to talk about stable patches and how we incorporate them in SUSE trees. Before I do that, uh, you just notice that I'm not Ben. Ben will be after me, like an half past 11. And between Ben and me, there will be Boris about, uh, and with short announcement about CVE fixes and how we should handle them. So uh, there is some change in the schedule. Now to my talk uh, about the stable patches. It just stopped working, apparently. Aha, uh -huh. I'm not in that window, sorry. Uh, we are definitely taking stable patches and are taking them into our trees. Uh, we take them as any other patch, uh, so we take one patch per file and put them into the tree. This happens for quite some time, as you might have noticed. Uh, more concretely, from uh, 12 SP2 somewhere around 4489, so it's quite some time we we have stable patches, one patch per file. So when we have or when we take some patch from upstream kernel, we put the uh, patch into a file and put it in some directory. Currently it is patches.suze and we this file name we put in series.conf file to have some order uh, which is applied to the base kernel and uh, to have it working we have to define the order somehow and this is exactly in series.conf file. Let's have a look at uh, the series.conf file, uh, what it looks like in stable and master branches. We have on the top of the series file stable patches which are taken from upstream and then there are other patches which are from upstream or not, it depends on the patch. They are divided in so-called sections. There are three sections in here. This is only logical uh, dividing of the patches so that we can make any sense of it. Note that there are only few patches in master and stable branches in this second part. So it's not much of a problem. Okay. There will be no change in master and stable branches. This will stay as is for next some years. I hope. Okay, so this is master and stable. What happens in SLE is a bit different. The series conf of SLE 15, for example, might look like this. So at the beginning, we still have stable patches and some stable fixes, like there is some fix for one networking card. And then what's new is this sorted section. The sorted section currently contains over 20,000 patches taken from upstream, and they are ordered by their appearance in upstream. Okay, so most of the patches are in this section, this sorted section. Then there is still a section or part of the file with other patches which are not upstream or oh, mostly which are not upstream or KB fixes. So, this part of the series con file and this part is the same as in master and stable branches. What's new or what we use currently in SLE 15 or other SLEs is the sorted section, which is larger and larger. What's going to happen and what we have been discussing lately is the change in SLE 15 SP2. What will happen there is that we will take all the stable patches too, but we won't put them at the beginning of the file. We will put them as other patches in between somewhere to the sorted section. Okay? There is a notice, it's 5.3 five five based kernel, so the stable patches won't be 4, 12, 1, and so on. They, they will be 5.3 something, but yeah, the concepts you can see there. Okay, so the change is that we won't have this part of series conf file. Every stable patch will be sorted as any other upstream patch in the sorted section. 
Of course, there are some problems connected with that, and I, I would like to discuss, discuss it here so that we can somehow decide what to do with it. The first pro problem, or it's rather a question, we used to place these stable patches into this directory, patches.kernel.org, and the rest was in patches.suze, etc. Okay? Now, when we move these patches to the sorted section, should we still use patches.kernel.org or patches.suze? Any opinions? I think we should still use the separation because this way you know which patches are uh, backports, like stable backports, and which are. Okay, and should we still use the directory for git fixes or alike, which uh, Takashi and Yerk is doing? Um, the question is whether we want to have that stable patches in the kind of vanilla or not. I will discuss this in yeah. a, uh, another question. So yeah. That's a crucial point. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we can identify that from some tag. For example, patch main I tag can show for, yeah, a 5.3 something. So we can see that from the patch itself. Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess that, uh, that also brings the question, what are we going to do if uh, there is, uh, we already have the fix, our own, and then the same commit comes backported from stable. So if we should replace it, move to the Quetchis kernel org directory, or keep what we already have, the easiest solution is to place everything what is in sorted section into patches.suse directory. But yeah, I, I'm not sure if everybody will want agree with that. Um, sometimes you might want to re-backport a uh, stable backport because, for example, we backported more stuff into the kernel, so you, you want to refresh the backport with the upstream version. I've done that a couple of times. So there's another question. Is that the stable backport or is our backport? So yeah, I mean, but it holds also for stable backports yeah. because... Or something in between, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So as an outsider, that namespacing is really nice because if a partner asks me whether we carry a specific patch that they know is in and stable, then I can just look through patches.kernel.org and I can filter series.conf and look whether we picked that patch up or not. So having namespaces like that in series.conf for somebody that doesn't work on the kernel, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we still can have some kind of tag or anything like or, that. Um, uh, anyway, if you are looking for a particular fix or a particular patch, I think git commit tag is a much better way to do that and more reliable. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and another thing is that with the increasing number of stable patches because that artificial intelligence, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that we might end up with actually filtering these patches so we will take just the important or safe ones and then there won't be that big difference between the other patches that we take because they are important <coughs> so. So you are saying to place so them I, in? I think that there will, will be maybe less difference between stable patches and the rest. Well, an important point is that unlike 4.4, 5.3 is not going to be a upstream LTS, so there will be only a limited number of releases, like 14, 15, something like that, probably. Right. Right, but that doesn't need to be necessarily for the next releases like SP4 or uh, SLE 16, so. Okay, so I don't know what the consensus is currently, but let's move to, to <laughs> kernel.org. Well, is there anybody against naming the patches or putting the patches to per patches dot kernel dot org? There is one. <laughs> uh, that's not um, as much of a disagreement than uh, our tooling actually doesn't allow refreshing kernel.org patches. There's a specific uh, check in refresh patch, which has beaten me several times 
So if we want to stay with that, then maybe we just want to remove that restriction. It just says that th those patches are going to be merged very soon, so it doesn't make any sense to refresh them, which is kind of not true, right? So um, yeah. I, I have no strong opinion one way or the, or the other. I just think that we shouldn't follow stable in the first place, but uh, that's for another discussion. And yeah. I'm not pushing that forward, but uh, if at least just remove the restriction. Um, but uh, if, if, we, if we put that stable patch into the sorted sections, we would need any way they're refreshing them. Yeah, right. Well, anyway, the stable patches are mostly backports because w when the kernel gets farther in time, it, the patches are, which are getting there are backports, in fact. So, so to, well, to my understanding, um, well, as of now, um, kernel dog art were just the stable backport and everything else was things which were not stable backports, or not necessarily stable backports. Um, with the understanding that we, as well, say, normal developers, wouldn't have to worry about anything coming in from stable because it would be in the current.org things. And we, and we also wouldn't need to worry about things in the current.org because it's being someone who's doing the stable backpass, i.e. you. Mm -hmm. This workflow obviously only works if you continue doing stable backpass. If we don't, then this workflow is completely pointless and we can ditch over all of these. So it rather revolves around, do we keep this workflow, i.e. do we keep tracking stable or not? I think we decided to do so on the last uh, labs conference, in the at least in the way uh, GitFixes is currently. Uh, okay, so why don't we continue doing so? Yeah, we, we can. It's just a matter of naming this, yeah. this thing. Okay, yeah. so just do so. I mean, yeah. I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay. I, I wouldn't now, and what's more, um, I wouldn't need to change that method, as it were. Maybe document it better, maybe, mm -hmm. but rather not, because if we do, then. If we do change it, then suddenly it, everything becomes a bit, well, identical. Everything is just one, and we would have just one large directory take in keeping all the patches, which then really becomes unwieldy, because then we can as well do away with the directory, because if, if there's only one directory holding patches, well, big deal, why do we need it? One of the big advantages is that by having more than one directory, we actually keep down on the number of patches per directory, may, making it more easy to handle, may, meaning to look at with, as with human eyes, not just having some tools to look at just because there are too many patches. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, what Misha and Hannes said uh, reminded me one thing, that uh, the idea of uh, getting rid of all those patches drivers, patches R, patches whatever directories was, to keep only those separate directories that require some special handling by, uh, by our tools, like patches RPMFI, which are also used for kernel vanilla, or patches KB, which are dropped on uh, next service pack. So as long as uh, stable backports are not going to be handled in any special way by any of our tools, there is uh, probably no reason to keep them in a separate directory. If there are, like if we try, for example, to do some kernel vanilla, which would be 5.3.15 or whatever, uh, then it would make sense to have them in a separate directory. Okay, yeah. Let's return to this later. I will just continue with the next question because we might return to this with, with the next questions. Okay, so what about minor numbering? Because stable patches or stable trees, when are released, they increase minor numbers. So when we had 4.12, we then had 4.12.1, 4.12.2, and so on. Uh, this was done by separate patches like, like in this file, okay? They are not upstream patches, in fact. So should we still import such a patches and increase the minor numbers or not? Perhaps somewhere to the end of the file. So do we need increasing minor numbers? I wouldn't say so because sometime there was an argument that customers want to see increases in minor numbers, yeah. but I'm if, not sure. If we're bringing all the patches that should make it the stable kernel, then we should use the stable kernel numbers. Otherwise, customers are just going to be confused about what's in it. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Okay, that was quick. Thanks. 
And the last question, which I have, is that uh, kernel vanilla flavor. It is currently generated from some first X100 patches from the top of the series file, in particular from patches.kernel.org, something there, and RPM IFI, which fixes build on some machines or architectures. When we put these stable patches to the, um, to the middle of sorted section, this won't be any more possible. So there would be conflicts. So what should we do? I have uh, like three options in here. The first one is, does anybody use kernel vanilla at all? Or can we drop it? The other one, you do. You do. For what? Testing. Okay. Yeah, that was the second option. Uh, if, uh, yeah, no, the, not the third one. But the second option was uh, we, we won't include in kernel one the stable patches, so we will just take the RPM IFI patches and the base kernel. That means that kernel one for SLE 15 SP2 will be 5.3 based and nothing more. The third option is, ah, yeah, it might be a problem for uh, another SPs because we might use new tool chains and kernel vanilla won't have fixes for these new tool chains, but we can still fix it in RPM if directory and yeah, we are. Uh, from what I remember, we usually do exactly for this particular yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, it's not a problem, but we, yeah. And the third option is that we will use upstream stable tree, which is somehow what Jeff said. We will all take from upstream, for example, 5.3.12, apply our PMFE on the top of that, and release it as kernel vanilla. So it will be built from differently from other flavors we currently use. Okay? So the first question, obviously, is do we really use kernel vanilla at all? Is anybody here who uses it? No, good. <laughs> Maybe the question is whether uh, the customer wants that. And we, this is a service pack upgrade. So, and we do not want to supply them so much. Yeah, so uh, that's the rather question to not to us developers, but rather, yeah, to outside. Yeah. So is anybody pushing these kernels to customers for testing or for something? Or you test it, but you can still build it somehow, I suppose. Yeah. I think using kernel vanilla for non long, uh, for non -long term supported stable kernel is kind of, well, useless or uh, critical to customers because there are no security updates in there and so mm -hmm. on. So I think that's a bad idea to keep it. Yeah. For long-term stable kernels, maybe, but not for those out of stable support for several years. That's a good point. That means that for uh, 15 SP2, we can drop it and see what happens when we have some newer SP or SLE, okay? <laughs> yeah, or that. Drop it and, and uh, wait for complaints. Uh, one Colonel question is that, ah, oh, sorry. Colonel uh, Vanilla is not even on the media. Sorry? Colonel Vanilla is not on the media, so we can skip it. Okay. All right. So it's, it's, it's only for the development? I, I didn't know that. Okay. Then that, that question. Perfect. So. If you are not going to handle the stable patches in the patches.kernel.org uh, directory differently as any other patch, so the question here means that we can drop the directory now. Yes. <laughs> cool. Any other questions or proposals? <laughs> if not, 
I'm done. Thank you for attention.